what's in the box. It's a very nice box, isn't it? It's got a wax seal. This is real wax. This is a real wax seal. This isn't like stuck on or something. This is some wax that has been melted over some string like a proper wax seal. This is dead impressive. Um, if you've seen the title of the video, which you presumably have because you clicked on it, and hello, welcome to Rob Paints Models, um, you know what this is already. <laughs> but we're going to unbox it, except I'm not actually going to unbox this particular one. Um, because this one is for a commission. I've got two of the same thing. It's from Artel W in Russia. Uh, maybe you pronounce that differently, I don't know. But that's how I say it in English. Artel W miniatures. They make some very, very nice stuff. At least based on the pictures on the website. Very nice. This is their logo, but in wax. And it's kind of hard to see with the reflection of the lights and so on. But it's a big old W. And their thing is seal so you know, makes sense now brown string brown paper i'm going to go and get a version that i've taken lots of this stuff off already for you it's a jump cut for me it's in a different room so there we go it's been unwrapped and i know this is how i know it's wax because look at that that is actually just you know that's wax on that paper so 10 out of 10 for presentation right there um, do I give points in these things? I don't know, maybe I should start. No, that's stupid. So, this is, oh, this is a, it's a tight box. And there we go. There's a sticker, I've bought a sticker. No. <laughs> it's their giant orc war boss. That's what I bought. Um, it's huge absolutely massive um basically if they remade gazkal and he is smaller than this then i would be disappointed so it comes in two baggies uh, not the best quality of baggy but it's a baggy what do you expect really and comes with a base this is not a games workshop base this is a rando other base uh, i believe this is a 50 mil this is indeed a 50 mil base Giving you an idea of just how big this guy is, uh, I'm gonna go get Gruck. So these are my size comparisons. We have a boy from the kill team, a knob from the kill team, and then Gruck, who is actually my, the commander of my kill team. We've got the three different sizes of orc. As you can see, they get bigger. So if you want some kind of Gazkal equivalent person, then you must want them to be pretty, pretty big, right? You know, bigger, bigger orcs are better. So let's have a look at these parts. Now this, I haven't done anything to these bits. This is how they've arrived. Straight out the packet, we can see we've got um, a little bit of the gate there. They've cleaned them up remarkably well. Now you buy something from Forge World, all the gates are still attached. The are still covered in flash. Uh, not so much here. No, they've removed the gates and they've removed all the flash. So, already I'm I'm chuffed. That's a lot of work that's I've been saved. It's not that shiny, so there's not a lot of mold release on it. I've got a uh, mold line just there, but it's not visible on the top. And there's no sign of it having been cleaned up, suggesting this is a one-part mold. That is, you know, they seem and split it open in order to get the, pe the parts out. Which, you know, that's good. Fort World can't do one part molds because of the way that they make their stuff. So yeah, the seam line, the, the molds line is only along the bottom of this piece. The casting quality is fantastic. If I was going to judge it by just one part, I would have to say this is an absolutely amazing quality casting. Um, way better than Forge World. The resin feels actually the same as Forge World's resin. Um, pretty much identical, in fact, in terms of colour. Do I have any? I don't have any unpainted Forge World stuff knocking about to do a comparison. But yeah, the, it's pretty much the same colour, and it's very much better quality casting. Now I did pre-order these, so I may have gotten some of the earliest pulls out of the moulds. 
There's no guarantee that if you order it now from them, you'll get the same quality, but I don't think they sell in such large volumes that it will really matter that much. So yeah, this is the hammerhead. There are two options for the weapons on this guy. One is a hammerhead, the other is an axe head. I don't know if that's in the same bag. In fact, I'm just going to carefully empty these out. And oh, okay, here's here's our comparison piece. Oh, and here, actually, no. Here is the axe head. I can see. Very orky. This stuff is all very much in keeping with Games Workshop's style, actually. Um, they, unlike uh, say your Cromlech parts or. The other fellas, I did a review of their stuff, I can't remember their name right now, um, who have their own style or interpretation of what an orc should look like. The re Part of the reason I liked this was because it would fit in really, really well into a Games Workshop plastic orc army, and you wouldn't be able to tell that it wasn't a Games Workshop kit um, or sculpt because of the quality and the style has been maintained throughout. So this is the axe head, which is just as good a cast as the hammer head. Very nice. Uh, can we find a seam line on this? Seam line down the top here, which would be a pretty easy cleanup job. To be honest, just a bit of filing and sanding. But again, looks like it's a one, another one part mold. So, only one seam line to deal with. But here are his legs. Here is an orc boy. Doesn't even come up to his, well, it barely comes up to his knees. Um, this, is, this is a big chappy. Here is the orc knob, whose head just about comes up to his waist. <laughs> Yep, this is a very big chap. And here is Gruck. I'm going to use the back of him here. And line up the feet. Gruck, a war boss model, comes up to approximately this guy's waist. So, yeah, this is a big model. This is a Big war boss. Just about comes up to his waist in terms of head height. His rocket launcher gets him a little bit taller, but yeah, you can see why I was excited about this. When I saw it, I was like, oh, that's going to be good. And there's a lot of details on here. It seems to be mega armor, which means, you know, you've got to use the rules from the index now. Um, and being on a 50 mil base is not actually that far off from an actual mega armored knob. I believe they're on 40 mils, aren't they? So, you know, it's not that far off. I don't know what else you could count him as on a 50 mil base, but I don't think anybody I would ever play Warhammer against would complain. They'd just be like, "That's so cool! Yes, that's your war boss. Just do it. It's amazing." So yeah, again, the casting quality is really good. Um, We've got a gate here on the foot, which needs to be removed. They've also removed this one. I think it probably just broke off quite easily, which is why it's been cut so close to the foot. Again, seam line down the middle of the foot there. Not on this foot, surprisingly enough. Oh, no, there it is. So it kind of, the mould curves like this, it seems. Um, one gate there. Yeah, so the seam lines are on the underside. On the top, we can see that this is, the master is a 3D printed model. Got, it looks like it was done on a resin 3D printer and then they used that to make their master. Uh, that red stuff is actually some of the wax that's come off of my fingers. It's not part of the mould. But again, I cannot see a second seam line to indicate a two-part mould. Oh, wait. No, there's something going on there. A little imperfection right there, but to be honest, you could play that off as just being some orky damage. And I can't see it continuing elsewhere. Oh, wait, maybe? I don't know, I feel like they've already cleaned this for me. Like, really effectively. So, 
They don't know I'm reviewing this or anything like that. They don't know who I am. You can only just make out the stepping from the 3D printer. And a little bit of mold release on this foot. But the stepping is very, very fine. So yeah, this looks like it's one of those high resolution resin 3D printers that's been used to print the masters. Um, I don't think it will show up, but I may give it a little bit of a sand in some spots just to get it off the worst of it. But yeah, otherwise, very good quality. Certainly, Ford World uses the exact same kind of process where they, these days, they model everything in 3D. Um, apart from some of the Primarchs, I think, don't get done that way. Um, Ford World uses 3D printers and has done for years now to make their masters. And to be honest, the print lines on this are less noticeable than on some of the recent Ford World kits I've got. So yes, enough looking at these legs. Let's look at what some other bits we've got. We've got a rock. Um, it's for him to put his other foot on, put him like that. It's even got a handy little key for where the foot's supposed to go, so you get it lined up nice. That's handy. I do like how everything is keyed with these t triangles or slots, so it is, makes sense, because there are no instructions with this on how to put it together. you got to work it out on your own. So, what else we've got? We've got a tiny little part here. Very small. Here's some heads on a spike. And I don't know where that goes. And we've got this arm here, which will be the big chopper slash big hammer holding arm. I'm guessing this must be part of the handle. And the fingernails are gross, but in a good way. They look really orky, like think they look like fingernails rather than claws, which is uh, nicer, in my opinion. A little bit of a seam line on the inside of the arm here, but they do seem to have put all the seams in the least noticeable locations that they could think of. Like, here it's kind of running across these veiny details that are in the arm, but yeah, that can be cleaned up, no problem. And the outside of the armour is nice and smooth, like metal is. Comes in something like 30 parts, this kit. I've got an exhaust, which I'm guessing goes in his backpack, or his power claw. We've got a second option for his arm. I didn't even know this existed. You have the option for a cyborg arm. And, ooh, I'm tempted to use this one on mine at least. This looks very cool. Lots of lots of bits, lots of details. Three fingers, just as it should be on a cyborg part. Yeah, I like this a lot. The little cogs have nice details. Again, I can't actually find the seam line in this one. I think it's there. But again, the casting quality is amazing. This casting quality is better than Forge World, to be honest. Um, this is chest armour, I believe, uh, head here. So, very nice. I have, I have to wait, I think the torso is in the other bag, so I'll see how that goes together. This is a kind of valve. A little bit left on there. Don't know where that goes either. Ah, these are, this will be a finger for the power claw. One of the many, one of the talons that are on it. We've got another one here. Again, if you can find the seam line, good luck to you. It certainly all seems to be one part moulds. There it is, just down there. Very easy to clean up. Very excellent quality across the board. This is the twin-linked shooter, or I guess custom shooter that gets attached to his power claw um, pretty basic uh, second exhaust and big pipe now this model won't have any posability at all um, but that's fine because you're only going to have one of them so 
I don't have a problem with that. I'm only going to have the one war boss. And the pose that he comes in, based on what's on the website, looks really good anyway. So that's bag one. On to bag two. So here's the torso. So the chest is exposed, so you can have it either exposed or, if you wanted to, with this chest plate on. Um, to be honest, I think you should probably have the chest plate on, because otherwise this area around here will look kind of weird. But it is exposed to make it easier to paint that chest area if you want to. It's doing a dry fit here and it seems to be pretty good. The tolerances seem pretty nice. Again, better than Forge World in terms of tolerances. It doesn't look like there's any shrinkage or anything. So that's the torso. So uh, I've got this. I'll have to clean this up before we can do a full size comparison. But his torso alone is the same height as an orc. So, <laughs> so yeah, here's a, here's a very, 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 very big big, big an orc. Which way around to go? Like that. So, just as a rough, there, yeah, be like that. So yes, he is a very, very large chappy indeed. So, not a lot of detail going on the chest. No nipples. Makes sense. I don't know why orcs would have nipples. They don't have to nurse or anything. Casting quality again, just continues to be amazing throughout. This is his backpack, the generator for his mega armor, which, you know, it would need a big one. And it goes on here, like this. A little bit of a gap there, but might be fine once I clean it up and sand it down. Also, I don't think he'd really notice it that much. Once it's together, certainly wouldn't notice it on that side. Might notice it a bit on that side, but I think you'll have an arm here. There's a key for something there. What do we think goes there? Would it be a... Probably this. Probably this pipe. Leads to the power claw. And the exhausts probably attach onto these. In some way. So yeah. That's the backpack. And here's the power claw. Main arm, power claw arm. We do have a little uh, gate left on there. Oh no, one little gate. Seam line again down the inside of the arm, the place that's easiest to clean up. These guys really, really do know how to make miniatures. And it looks like it's supposed to have like a scorcher inside of the power claw. At least I'm going to argue that it does, because it looks like cool and it'd be a great idea to just be able to grab something with your power claw and then just go with your scorcher. Um, some bullets for the bullet feed for the custom shooter, I'm guessing. Yes, the custom shooter goes on there and you get a bullet feed going in. Again, for space on this tolerances, no shrinkage whatsoever. Excellent. We have, I'm going to save that, that's a very cool piece. We have a boss pole. Um, this is a gate. This is where it actually connects. And that must connect onto, yeah, we've got this here. And there's one on this side too, actually. I think, based on the width of this thing, this one's supposed to go here, like that. And, oh, wait. And, ah, ha, ha, ha. and this, the skulls, go on that side. That makes sense now. So you've got a trophy rack. You've also got a skull here with that's not a gate that is supposed to be there that looks like it's supposed to go through its head a skull that's been nailed onto the top of his torso so this is excellent excellent quality you can see the print lines a little bit on the boss pole it's printed vertically rather than this way which I think would have probably made more sense but looking pretty nice Again, we don't have any Games Workshop infringing material on here. Like no Space Marine helmets or anything like that going on. I 
again, I'm going to save that bit for later. We've also got a couple of these big haunts. I don't know where these go. Um, they're keyed for going in somewhere. Do they connect onto this? No. I don't know where these horns go. I mean, I'm not even sure they're even necessarily from this kit. So that's a bit weird. Maybe they connect onto this somewhere. Nope. I would have thought these would go on the front. But I don't know where. They certainly look in the same style. I can't see anywhere because it's a square key, not a triangle, and this thing it mostly uses triangles. So, nothing on the legs that has a square hole. So I'm not sure what the deal with these bits are. I'll have a look at the pictures and on the internet and see if I can figure out where these are supposed to go. But I don't think they're even from this model. They don't look like they don't look right. And they're not in the concept art, so hmm. Put those to one side. Uh, exhaust. A shoulder pad. Nice and spiky. One of the spikes is broken off. One, uh, it's just shorter, actually, not broken off. Again, seam line on the inside where you can't see it. Such, such attention to detail. One head, and it is a good one. It is very detailed. We've even got a roof of the mouth in there, which will be interesting to paint. It, so it's completely in style with the Games Workshop face. The teeth are a little smaller, actually, but you can get away with that in resin, more so than you can in uh, plastic. The eyes are a little smaller as well. I think, generally speaking, it's a much better proportioned face, but it's not so stylistically different from Games Workshop that it doesn't fit. Cranial plate, big jaw, I like it a lot. And then we have the things that go on the back, so on this back pack here we've got this key. On here you can, if you want, have this. It's not another head, <laughs> it is, I'm guessing, the previous war boss's skull with rockets in its mouth. It's a rocket launcher skull mount. So, you know, he killed the previous war boss to take his place and then stuffed his mouth full of rockets and now uses him as a rocket launcher. Which is amazing. I love it. It's absolutely brilliant. But alternatively, you can have um, that way. Yep, like that. Yeah. yeah. And then you have uh, a, a gun. Yep, this sight is pretty monster. Pretty big. No barrels need drilling. Little rock gunner. Who can sit on the top there. Firing the gun on the back of the war boss. <laughs> he is just as well sculpted as the rest of it. Actually, this grot is a hench. He is so muscly. <laughs> this is like a bodybuilder of a grot right here not like not like the games workshop grots are all weedy this this grot is is he'll you know he, if he'll punch you you'll know it but i guess grots are you know for their size they're still pretty strong for how small they are but yeah that is that is one hench grot so that's all of the parts i've shown you everything oh i haven't shown you the grot's hands here you go Very tiny details, very well rendered. Um, this is an amazing kit. The quality is just astounding. And I'm going to go and cut some of these keys off and then start doing a dry fit. Um, but I will do that later. And you will see the dry fit version after uh, this jump cut.
So there we go. RTLW's Iron Boss. There are some bits left over. You get an option for hammer or axe for his melee weapon. You also get an option for a grot gunner or a big head full of rockets for the top weapon. Um, I went with the axe and the grot gunner because I thought it was more classic. You also get an option of a cyborg or regular arm on this side. I went with cyborg because I thought it looked a bit cooler. Um, but the regular arm is also very good. So, is this the new... Uh, sorry for the clickbait video, by the way. Uh, the clickbait title. I couldn't resist. I was feeling mischievous. But, uh, no, this isn't a new Gazcall model, but I am going to be using it as Gazcall. He's, he's, you know, appropriately sized. I mean, look at this. There's Grok. And there's the Iron Boss. Grok just about comes up to his waist. And Grok stood on, like, 5 mil of extra basing material there. So, um, yeah. This guy. This. This is the guy. I don't know what else he could count him as. I mean, maybe it, he could try and count him as a Death Dread. He's not quite big enough. He's big enough to be a killer can, but that would be a terrible idea. So, uh, yeah. War Boss in Mega Armor from the Index, I guess. Custom Shooter and the rest of the stuff is just kind of, you know, for funsies. Or you could go, if you stick the rockets on top, you could say it's Custom Rocket Launcher. But, uh, yeah, he dwarfs Grok now. Grok makes Grok look like a regular orc. So I'm very, very happy with this model, and I'm very excited to get to work on this. It also looks like he's got um, a Scorcher mounted inside of his Power Fist there. I, I just, I wish there was a, there were rules that would allow me to field this model with the equipment that it's got. Uh, one, one thing to note, if you're going to use the supplied rock, and I only put it on the base because... Uh, it was supplied with it. I wouldn't actually use this. I'd build my base up to match the rest of my army. Um, rotate it a bit. Make sure it's going to fit because my guy's nearly falling off his base here. But yeah, I'm going to be building it up uh, in a junkyard style like the rest of my orc army for my one. So it's absolutely gorgeous. Still available from RTLW. Link will be in the description down below. You can check them out. They've got a lot of good models on there. I had a couple of other things arrive in this delivery, but this was the the one that I wanted to do the unboxing on. And all of their stuff is of superb quality. Just absolutely amazing. Excellent, excellent, excellent quality resin. I cannot fault it whatsoever. The, I only spent about 15 minutes cleaning this guy up to get rid of seam lines, and that was all he needed. It was barely any work at all. Uh, less work than cleaning up Forge World models for sure, and the casting quality is way better than Forge World. So, yeah, absolutely worth the price, and a gorgeous sculpt to boot. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a uh, one of them a like. Leave a comment below telling me uh, that you noticed that I stabbed my thumb with my pin vice. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. You can subscribe to the channel up there. You can check out my Patreon there, where you can see early access to tutorials and uh, painting colour guides and such like. Uh, YouTube thinks you'll like that video there, whatever it is. And check out my social medias down there. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.